our earth is full of natural wonders. From the top of Mount Everest to the bottom of Mariana Trench, we experience our graceful Mother Earth. Talking about landforms, we have mountains, hills, plateaus, lowlands along with their innumerable varieties and the list is endless. But how do these landforms get their shape? The landforms get shaped primarily by two forces, endogenic and exogenic forces. We have already studied about them. Let me remind you that Endogenic forces are the internal forces that are active inside the earth. In this video, we can see collision of two tectonic plates. Here, the collision of two tectonic plates represent the endogenic forces. This video shows how the overlying rocks or the land surface gets crumbled and folded up to form a fold mountain. This is how the endogenic forces change the land surface. Now, there are other forces that are active on the earth's surface and they are called exogenic forces. In this video, we can see the action of rivers and winds. These actions of rivers and winds represent the exogenic forces. The video shows that the mountain is being continuously eroded by river and wind. This is how the exogenic forces change the land surface. So, we just discussed that there are two forces that change the structure and form of the earth surface and they are endogenic forces and exogenic forces. Endogenic processes are the processes that act inside the earth like the collision of tectonic plates and Exogenic processes are the processes that act on the earth's surface like erosion of a mountain by a river. Now these two processes are not independent but they act together and jointly change the earth's surface. So these forces that change or transforms the form and structure of the earth's surface are called geomorphic processes. Here the word geo means earth and morphic means form or structure. Thus geomorphic processes are the processes that change the form and structure of the earth's surface. And geomorphic processes include two processes, endogenic processes and exogenic processes. In this video, we will discuss about exogenic processes in details. Now, before we move on, let us try to answer this question. What do the geomorphic processes do? They lead to formation of soil lead to change in weather and climate, cause tides or change the form and structure of the earth's surface? Well, the correct answer is change the form and structure of the earth's surface because we just discussed that geomorphic processes are the processes that change the form and structure of the earth's surface. So as I just said that we will discuss about exogenic processes in details. Now exogenic processes is a part of geomorphic processes that change the form and structure of the earth's surface. Now the main aim of exogenic processes is to create an even topography or lead to general leveling of the earth's surface. In erosional processes, we mainly see two kinds of processes. In the first case, we see erosion of highlands, highlands like mountains and hills, which causes the height of mountains or hills to decrease. And in the second case, we see that these eroded sediments are deposited at lowlands, which causes the height of lowlands to increase. 
So, the height of lowlands increases and the height of highlands decreases. So, this causes an even topography of the land surface. So, now we will see how these processes actually work. We just read that there are few exogenic processes that lowers the height of mountains and this process in which the height of mountain decreases is known as degradation. Now in this video we can see that the height of the mountain is gradually decreasing due to action of wind or river. So, this process represents degradation. So, what is degradation? Degradation refers to the wearing away or lowering of land surface due to action of river or wind. In the previous video, we saw that the height of the mountain is continuously decreasing due to erosion by wind or river. Now, these eroded sediments are deposited at the riverbed, which is causing the height of the riverbed to increase. Now, this process is known as aggradation. So, what is aggradation? Aggradation refers to the elevation or increase in height of land surface due to deposition of sediments. In this video, we can see that the river is carrying the eroded sediments and depositing at the riverbed, which is causing the height of the riverbed to increase and this process is called aggradation. So, we read about two processes, degradation and aggradation. Degradation causes the height of the land surface to decrease, while aggradation causes the height of the land surface to increase. Now, these two processes act together and leads to general leveling of the earth's surface and they are together known as gradation. So, what is gradation? Gradation refers to the general leveling of the land surface. See, degradation is causing the height of the mountains to decrease and aggradation causes the height of the riverbeds or lowlands to increase. So, there is a general leveling of the land surface and this is known as gradation. We just read that gradation is a combination of two processes, degradation and aggradation. Now, although these two processes act together, but they are not alike. So, let us discuss the differences between these two processes. Degradation refers to the lowering of land surface, while aggradation refers to the elevation of land surface. In degradation, we saw that the height of the mountain decreases due to erosion by natural forces like rivers and wind. And in the process of aggradation, we saw that the height of low land increases due to deposition of sediments at river beds. Now, the second point of difference between these two processes is that degradation is effective at higher altitudes, while aggradation is effective at lower altitudes. In case of degradation, we saw that the height of mountains decreases. Now, mountains are generally found at higher altitudes. So, degradation is mostly active at higher altitudes. While in case of aggradation, we saw that the height of river beds or lowlands increases due to deposition of sediments. Now, these lowlands are usually found in lower altitudes. Therefore, aggradation is active at lower altitudes. So, we understood the differences between degradation and aggradation. Although these two processes are different, but they are interlinked and they together causes general leveling of the land surface. Now, what are the factors that causes these two processes or changes the land surface? The natural factors that change the land surface are called 
agents of gradation these agents of gradation leads to change in the structure and form of the land surface now these agents include rain now when rain drops fall on land or rocks they seep into the cracks of the rocks thus making the cracks wider sometimes the rock break off along these cracks apart from this some minerals present in the rocks gets mixed with rain water which makes the rocks weaker this is how rain acts on the rocks and change the land surface Another agent of gradation is river. Rivers flow on land surface at high potential and the waves crash on rocks which causes the rocks to disintegrate. This is how the rivers change the land surface. The next agent of gradation is wind. winds often scratch or polish the surface of the rocks they not only polish the surface of the rocks but they also carry loose sediments like sand along with them and therefore the soft and superficial surface of the rocks get eroded and the hard surface of the rocks become exposed and they are again subjected to the action of wind and the last agent of gradation that we have is glacier glaciers are huge chunks of ice they scrape the land surface over which they move the glaciers also deposit the debris when they melt so this is how the glaciers and as a agent of gradation so the agents of gradation are the natural forces that are active on the earth surface and they are rain river wind and glaciers so here we have a summary chart on geomorphic processes we have already understood the meaning of geomorphic processes what are geomorphic processes geomorphic processes are processes that change the form and structure of the land surface and geomorphic processes mainly includes two processes endogenic and exogenic processes endogenic processes are active inside the earth while exogenic processes are active on the earth surface in this video we have talked about exogenic processes extensively exogenic processes mainly includes degradation and aggradation and they are together known as gradation now degradation is a combination of other processes like weathering mass movement and denudation so in this video we have discussed about geomorphic processes in details we have also discussed about exogenic processes like degradation aggradation and together gradation next we have discussed about various agents of gradation In our next video we will discuss about these processes of degradation like weathering mass movement and denudation in details Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to our 5000 amazing videos as per your school syllabus master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests get all your doubt resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy but it's rewarding too so register for free now